And I'm delighted to say uh, Derek McNamara of reactrugby.com is with us to uh, parse some of the stats and figures. A, a nice one to do when we're winning games like this. It is. I think there's a you know, car- direct correlation between me joining to start doing this. And us being the best thing in the world. It's just yeah. it's uncanny. Like, you After know, the first game against New Zealand, though, I have to say, well, you know. I know. And you, you, things you, turned you around. believe now. I, I believe now. <laughs> yeah. I've put my hand in the wound and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm covered in blood. Okay, don't worry. I'm pretty sure those days are going to come back, so don't worry about it. It's all cyclical, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, like, I think, you know, it's, it's good to kind of jump back and, and even start where we left off last week, which was... Um, World Rugby are trying to implement these new rules around the game to try and speed the game up and try and improve the overall standard of the game. I just want to point out to everybody, we were on this. We've been talking about the ball and play time basically since we started last summer. I've been doing it for around eight years. It's the first time anybody's going to listen to me. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it was it was the big talking point in all the papers afterwards. Yeah. Like, oh, look at the difference. But you, you had, like This is one of those bits where uh, past performance is no indication. Of, but actually, sometimes it really is. Yeah, but it's more... So the one thing we want to try and remember the word that we want to try and remember is conditioning okay so in order for you to be conditioned to play this way all players must be at a certain level and you know when we actually take a kind of mile high view of it you know we got everybody who's involved in Irish rugby from schools to club to international all the way up you know needs to step take a step back and and enjoy this moment and, and feel part of it and as we lead up to the World Cup, because it's it's not just come as a result of... Now, obviously, there's one significant person whose fingerprints are all over this, who's leaving for France next year, um, Mr. Lancaster, uh, because his way of training the Leinster team and being able to get them conditioned enough to be able to play at this level is is a very significant part of the way in which... why, why Ireland are playing this way. But I, I have a couple of graphs here just to kind of outline... And I'm sorry if these feel a little uh, COVID-y. <laughs> you would have seen these types of graphs before. But basically, um, if we have the first graph there, that'd be great. Um, so basically, this is just the kind of ball in time um, in minutes over the last year and the international games uh, through the summer and then autumn internationals. And the the, the, the lines that are in green are the Ireland R- games. OK, so anybody's not watching... Um, basically, we're just showing the, the average or the actual total number of game minutes per game over 2022. That the ball is in play. The ball is in play. So that's basically when the ball is kicked off, the guy, somebody catches it, goes to Rook and then kicks the ball out. We stitch those seven or eight seconds together to give us the actual amount of time of ball in play, which is really, really important for uh, being able to help your team get conditioned. It's really important for you to be able to understand how much time your SNC coaches need to use, get their players ready for games. It's it's, it's an enormously important uh, metric that, that basically... Where, where, where we, it's our starting point, basically. It's also revealing about the team's philosophy. Ireland want the ball to be in play. We're, we're uh, like, you can see it. You, yeah. You can see instinctively that the Andy Farrell era of Ireland is different from the Joe Schmidt era, and that we're, uh, maybe it's not, maybe Joe Schmidt also kept the ball in play this amount of time, but um, yeah. it, certainly, it certainly feels like we're using this as a weapon as opposed to uh, it being coincidental. Yeah, and I think, like, the race is on now. You know, the race is on now for, for teams to, to understand what Ireland are doing and try and catch up with them because this trend is going up. You know, now th- there are elements within it. So, like, we look at the under-20s competitions as well and they haven't seen that big increase in, in time and ball and play. So, this te- from the looks of it right now, it looks as if this is just being implemented at the international level, at the highest level, which is grand. It's totally fine. I'm, 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 a, I'm a professional. So, the first weekend we did it, uh, we looked at this in detail was the first round of the interprovincials or second round of interprovincials and it, like the ball and play was something astronomical um, obviously the referees are getting used to it people are getting used to it but um, so two, thing, two things have happened here World Rugby have changed the rules and Ireland were already in, in advance of the World Rugby rule changes trying yeah. to <clears throat> turn this into our advantage exactly and so if we look at the graph what we see is is that Ireland um, have kind of like the highest on average rate of ball and play in 2022 so the, the, the highest number of minutes that were um, last year were 35 minutes of ball and play however since the implementation of these rules and the start of the Six Nations the you know, last weekend's game went to 44 minutes of ball and play. Okay, so there's uh, 44, 38, 37, 37, and 33. So the 33 game was the Italy-France game, um, where France kicked the ball out of play a lot. That was the only game that was... But, like, if you look at the what were the <clears throat> the top five 
games, um, top highest four of them were in the last two weeks. So it just gives you an idea. And then if we go on to the, the next slide, <clears throat> this will give us an idea of um, what, what the implement, implementation or implications are of this. We can see that you know the average number of ball and uh, actual activities that we grade was around 2,200. And it's now jumped to you know just under 3,000, which is insane. It's totally insane. So explain that, sorry. So basically, every time a player gets a ball, whether it's a carry, a catch, a pass, a kick, a ruck, a tackle, a tackle assist, a counter ruck, a line out lift, line out throw, line out jump, every time we do, we, we grade each instance based on you know whether the speed on the ball, whether it's the uh, accuracy of pass, the accuracy of the ruck. So naturally enough, the more the ball is in play, the yeah. more activity there happens. Exactly, and it's actually a seismic leap forward. It's it's you're talking about a thirty percent increase, which is. I think we talked about it last week around, you know, you doing 30% more work per day. You know, it's it's okay one day or month a week. And this is what these guys do. They 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 work harder, you know, for a very short period of time. And they obviously, that's get conditioned. But if you're not conditioned to play against Ireland and you're not ready to, to be working that hard, as soon as you get to a certain point in time, you're just not going to be able to physically exert that amount of energy. And what happens is, is that and there's a another effect, which is... You're, you're, you're mentally not able to do it so you start making mistakes and that's you know we talked about this last week and that's exactly what happens in the game on sa on, on Saturday I think it was at the, the 43rd minute you know the first point I saw it happening was the uh, coming to the line out slow France were really slow to get in the line out you could see they were like already beginning to, to dip because they've already put in a full works full games work by that stage you know they'd already done a thousand activities by that stage a ball and play obviously leads straight into the fact that everyone's talking about this as, as an unbelievable spectacle and a brilliant game because mm. clearly it helps um, is, I don't want to simplify it too much but is it is it just a case that Irish uh, provinces and Ireland international level target French clubs and France internationally because they're so big that more ball and play no. is it a fitness it's thing or what? it's a fitness thing yeah well it, like the way to look at it um is you look at the likes of say Jim Gavin's mm. foot or Gaelic football uh, dynasty, you'd probably call it. And I remember going to a game, and I, you know, I found it very interesting the way they would score. They would do this kind of circle around outside the, the thirty meter mark. I think, I think thirty five. And basically, they just re you know pass the ball in a circle. The players would go round and round in circles until they got to the optimal position, and they weren't under pressure to take the kick. And that was you know that was gameplay. Then you also had the skill. So the skill was they would be able to get the ball and be able to ping a pass 30 metres and the ball land in the person's hand rather than bouncing. But then they also had the fitness. So those three things put together are what is important. You've got your, your game plan, which everybody knows. You've got your um, skill set levels at a certain level so that if you can't have to pass that ball, you can do it. And then you've also got the work rate. So that everybody's working at the hardest rate. Ireland have that right now. Technical, uh, tactical conditioning. Yeah, yeah. So they're able to, um, everybody knows what they're supposed to do. Everybody knows where, where they're supposed to go. But everybody has the skill set to be able to. And I think this is this this is a new era in rugby. Like I This is, this is really, really exciting. When you're at the game, it's remarkable that the ball has moved so quickly along the back line. Mm -hmm. You're not actually sure. So we're up in the crowd and very high up and looking down. And mm -hmm. it's like, who has the ball? Oh, it's over there. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's something that I, we can look into again. I think this is the sort of simplified look at it. Yeah. But we also look at the distance between each breakdown. So we would look at, you know, the 10 metres per, per distance between, you know, and a y-axis. And that, you know, Ireland are right way up there, very high. So they, they spread the ball quite quite a lot. But France keep it really, really narrow. And that's counter counterintuitive to the way in which we think it is. Um. Well, maybe we can delve into that uh, yeah. over the over the coming weeks. Yeah. The, the bit that you said that the race is on for everybody to catch up. Um, the the team who you'd fear the most being able to catch up in the period of time that we have is probably New Zealand, in that they have Joe Schmidt looking at this, going, <coughs> "Okay, you have the high level of skill, but you don't have the same level of being able to do this for the 120 minutes or however yeah, long these games are actually." But the the problem with that though, Jerry, is that you need to have everybody knowing what they're supposed to do. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. So, like in 
the way in which Ireland play against New Zealand and they played against France at the weekend for a defensive perspective is they, they do something called close the door, right? And it's quite subtle. You probably won't, you look, the vast majority of people won't see it, but when you're looking at the game, as much as unfortunately I am, <laughs> you do see it. And that's basically, they only move up, ever move up when the player decides to pass, okay? So basically you'll see they, they, they move up as soon as they can until the player gets the ball in their hand and once they make a decision either to pass or to carry they then move they, they sprint up again so basically they shut the door shut the, shut the door and the way in which the French tried playing last weekend and the way in which the, the New Zealanders usually play is that they've usually got one guy who's able to break a tackle or break a play or make an amazing you know game changing play but if that's taken out if, you, if, you, if you're cutting out the decision making or the ability to do that then that's how you beat these teams. So it's 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 not just the skill. It's not just the fact that they can go left or right. It's the fact that they're able to, and like you could see that the breakdown in the, the, the defense the structure is so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing, and that's it's you know massive credit to to Irish rugby. Okay. The the next slide, uh, Derek. You're talk. You're looking at performance by position, which yeah. is quite interesting. Here. I'm basically looking at it all except the front row. Ireland outperformed France essentially. Yeah, but fundamentally, yeah. Well, the second row as well, second row um, as well, Marjorie. and then the centres as well. <laughs> well, yeah, a couple. So basically, <laughs> we have our back row who would be the best in the world right now. For the um, for, this, for the podcast listeners, though, the yeah. the French front row is slightly ahead. The second row, they're level. The um, centres are level as well. And so, yeah. And what what we're saying here is is that we're we're taking those. I mean. Uh, so there was three thousand three hundred and six of those. There was one thousand eight hundred of them we're Ireland's and what we're doing is we, we then um, say okay well that's that's kind of like a score to, based on the quality of the player's performance so the pass how accurate it was a five is best and the four is you know really good three is expected and two is ball goes to play and our ground and one is a turnover when we aggregate all the scores by these positions whether it's the even the substitutes we can then average out and say okay which of these positions are making more uh, mistakes and which of these positions are, are better so that we can then build a game plan around specifically this, how to beat a team. Um, and yeah, as you can see, the back row were obviously better. The the halfbacks, I think Intermac probably had a poor game, if, if I'm honest, by his standards. Um, he, he, he struggled to get into the game. Because DuPont obviously had a great game. DuPont was off the charts, yeah. like He probably had probably the best game in the competition so far. Um, and still at a halfback pairing level, Ireland beat them. Yeah, yeah, because Sexton had a great game as well. Sexton had a really, really top game. Um, yeah, and there's probably something we can go into in a bit more detail next week or, you know, when when, when we don't have the games actually to do. Um, but yeah, from, from, and even the back row as well. So the kicking, catching and passing and carrying, Ireland were significantly better than the back three, even though the French player came out a little bit, Jer, as you as you predicted. Yeah, <laughs> kick to them willy nilly at your at your peril. Oh, like, yeah. no, nah, that's not how they play anymore. It's like, no, oh, it's pretty good. It was say. bad, but it was more poor defending than than French. There was a lot of poor defending in the middle, yeah. of that, but you're that's the the dread hand of the statistician coming. In. No, it's only poor defending. It was <laughs> it was glorious. It was absolutely glorious. Yeah, we can yeah. totally appreciate it now that we've won that of game. Of course, yeah. And but like, don't forget it. And you look at the Scottish game and the the Welsh game, and you look at the Irish game. Like, there was only a couple of points in it at a half time but it was that conditioning and that ability to and the quality of these positions to be able to push on and, and yeah, to pull it, away it did feel like we were superior in the first half and it did feel like we were going to be able to do what we were doing repeatedly whereas mm-hmm. it took that moment of a bit of genius and a few missed tackles for for their try to um, to happen the, the tens um, comparison you've done that yeah. for us because we, we're obviously like we, we don't know how well Ross Byrne is going to do over the long period of time but we're beginning to build up some pictures of uh, what happens. Previously, we would have said that whenever Sexton isn't in the team, the difference is chalk and cheese mm-hmm. when Ireland play, no matter who the, the, the fill-in is. How did he do at the weekend? Yeah, so um, this is just a graph kind of outline. So we need to kind of take into consideration what they're doing and then how well they're doing it. So um, if we look at this graph, we're kind of showing the kind of key five strat- or, or skill sets of a 10. So you've got carrying, kicking, passing, tackling and rucking. And by ag- aggregating what the players are doing, we're able to say, OK, well, you know, Ross Byrne as a... Now, Sexton and Intermac had nearly twice as many of activities as Byrne, so it's not as, as very equal, so that's why it's out of percentages. But what we're showing here is is that um, Ross Byrne carries the ball 44% of the time, 
into Mac 41 and Sexton 38%. So, and then if you look at the kicking stats, and uh, Sexton kicks the ball 23%. Into Mac fifteen and Burn sixteen, so there's a little bit of discrepancy between them, but we, we would need more than one game to, sure. to be able to show. But you know, fundamentally, Burn had a good game. You know, he had a good game from what he was asked to do. He he was you know similar to what Sexton and and Inter Mac were. But when we go to the next slide, it kind of shows the kind of reality of the situation, which is the quality. So when we aggregate the quality of those kicks, the quality of those passes, the quality of those uh, carries, we can see that Sexton's um, carrying and passing is significantly better. But the thing about it, this is, is that this gives somebody like the RFU or somebody like the Leinster branch or Leinster Rugby the ability to go in and say, OK, this is the... Qu- this is factually the difference between the two players in passing. This yeah. is Burn Ross. We need to, you to work on your passing over this distance. These are your targets. And this is yeah. And this is how we set short, medium, long term goals using analytics to help players and coaches improve. Okay, so I think from an Irish rugby fan's perspective, the fact that the fall off to Ross Byrne is nowhere near as pronounced as it might have been in, in previous years is really encouraging. Like we're not we're not totally toast if Sexton is unavailable for a big game. This is, this is genuinely, like, how many hours a week do you talk about Sexton? <laughs> well, he's the most important, literally the most important character in our sport. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd say, um, look, it, structures, um, fitness, uh, skill level, and um, the ability of a team to pull all together is always going to be more important than the one individual. So we can see that at the weekend. We lost our front row. We lost back row, our second row with Ty Byrne. We, we lost our, our scrum halves. We lost our centres. But the, the, the structure of the actual team stayed the same and the ability of the team to play on. So I, I wouldn't be as stressed <laughs> as, it, as as you are around, whether it be Ross Byrne. Oh, we're, getting be, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're, we're getting there, Jerry. Okay, yeah. we're, we're getting there. We are. <laughs> The, the, the kicking stats aren't so the, this is ball and play as opposed to kicking off the tee yeah, no kick, kicking so when we say kicking we say kick to touch kick up and play box kicks cross field kicks kick a goal drop goals it's it's an amalgamation of all those so together would Intermax stats then be affected by the fact that Ramos has taken the yeah, kicks yeah it could be yeah be, well it's again that, that, that would be taken into consideration the, the, the kicking so you can see Intermac in the percentage and what they do. Mm. So there, there's, there ha- there, this is definitely something that is completely different to React Rugby than, than our competitors. We're, we're looking at not just what teams do, but how well they do in, you know, implement those, th- those activities. And what, what, what our difference is, is that like, the, the activities themselves could be considered what the coach's game plan is for the team. We want you to do this. The grades allow us to identify the bi- player's ability to implement that game plan. So if we see a skewed line where it's a couple of players are up and down, because and that's basically the players not understanding what it is they're supposed to be doing, or just out of their depth. And presumably you want to be seeing Ross Byrne stats higher than, than given he's not in the pitch for maybe as long as Johnny Sex. I know he was replaced reasonably early, but you want to be seeing Ross Byrne stats up there. Um, like which they, which they appear to be for for carrying certainly and and, and passing. Yes, but again, it's, it's how that fits in. Is that what the coach wants him to do? Yeah. Does does the coach want him to pass or carry? And like that's something that you know the 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 Welsh and the Italians are having trouble with, which is the ball gets to their ten and the ten turns around and the players are too close to them. Like you'll see it with the Welsh game, the players aren't in position where they know they're where they're supposed to be, so the ten doesn't know what to do because I'm not going to pass the ball a half a meter to somebody because it's just going to be a hospital pass. So that all these things kind of add up and our, our analytics are able to then identify why or how or who is responsible for that. Let's talk about Caelan Doris. How did he do? Yeah, Caelan. Um, I might have been a bit harsh when my first pods I was in here with by Caelan. I think I might have said he needs to get uh, bring in uh, Conan. Um, but basically we what we have here is a You've graph. changed your tune, have you? I have indeed. I, my tail is yeah, well back. between my legs here. <laughs> But um, the, the, basically, we have two graphs here, one indicating the quality of performance and the second one looking at the, the number of activities that are happening, he, he's involved with, or his production in the game. 
and basically the for people that are, sh- are listening to this it's the, the 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 trend line are both going in the right direction where his performance the quality of his performance have increased significantly and that's over everything I, I tried going in to see whether or not it was based on his carrying or his rooking or his line aids and it's just a bit of everything it's not there's no one trend so which is really really good it just shows that he was he's improving in every performance and this this is the quintessential for any any teams any players any coaches that are out there understanding players that are improving is is, is so important to your your team's performance um this this graph just shows how important he is. So, uh, for people at home, the first game that we have on this graph graph is the um, the uh, second test against New Zealand. He had eighty three instances in the game, and on Saturday he had one hundred and thirty player into activities wow. rated. So you know fifty fifty odd more activities involved in the game. And this 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 just shows the game plan of the team. And how Car- Doris fits into it. Also, his maturity, growing sense of confidence, and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Leaders, that, yeah, yeah. And then the, the the graph on top then just shows the quality of his performance. So when we average out all of Kalen's scores or all of his grades, you know he goes from a three point two eight to a three point four two. But he's he's kind of on that level the whole time. So it just means that he's getting to the breakdown quick enough, or he's making the right decisions at the breakdown. He's making the right decisions at the line out. He's making the right decisions at the passing, and you know everything. So he's you know very very important part player for Ireland. Um, I, I don't know. Have you done all the other games yet, or is that the type of thing that happens over the rest of the week? No, well, we we've got the we've got two of the games done. Where, where I, I, the Super Bowl got in the way of the no. third game, um, which yeah, it's a bit it's very disappointed with the the. Um, Defense of, uh, God, I forgot the Eagles. The Eagles, yeah. I was, I, I thought they were going to come, come good. No sacks. Uh, but I think you know you got to you got to put it up to the, the offensive line for Kansas City. You know they they were able to to stop anything that King were was put at them. You know. Yeah. The, the, the obviously the, the 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 situation got to got to Phillies instead. Yeah, but to their defense, but not to their their kid quarterback who had an all-time great yeah. game and still yeah. ends up on the losing side yeah. um, is there any any other trends you saw from the rugby that you think um, like the the French kicking any of that stuff that um, Hugo Keenan obviously had a great game that was one of the other things you'd, you'd mentioned to us yeah Hugo had another brilliant really excellent game um, he <clears throat> so the the other kind of major element or the major identifier that, that France were right in their feet was I think was it at the 50 Fifty sixth minute, I think it was, maybe may I have it in my notes. But um basically you, you had um when was it? It was the fifty sixth minute, yeah, where uh, the the fifty twenty two, you could see that the French were out of position. That's a massive indicator that the t- the players are becoming fatigued where they think they were out of position, that they weren't, you know, getting into position because you, you know you just don't see there will be one player in the backfield yeah. at international level. Um, but Hugo Doy, um, his positioning is is immaculate. You know his ability to to understand where that kick is going to be, um, and then also coming out. So it was interesting to see France. Anytime they kicked and the ball landed somewhat outside of the twenty two, you had Hugo run the ball back, which is definitely different to what what had previously happened in the games where Ireland would have just kicked it back. So why do you think we're doing that? So we're looking for that that similar situation to uh, the try by Hugo. So we're looking for that. Okay, we can we get into midfield? Can we break down? Can we get into that third or fourth phase where we can set up a strike play, or you know just to to, to tire bodies out? And like, like I'm going to roll up again after this, but like um, the the. Uh, what's the the hooker's or props name? Who's yellow carded? The, the the Antonio. Antonio. Yeah, like. We found two other instances in the game, but three altogether, where you know he could be cited for that. Mm. Where there was a, t- a missed late tackle on Sexton, and then there was a, a tackle off the ball on Porter. I think it was, where it was just like, like and I, I suppose he's trying to bring in the same type of game plan that that an Arishel did, where it's quite aggressive. You, you know, you 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 um cut down the space of Leinster you, you try and command the game a lot more but you, you're, you're very very physical he probably tried to implement that and and, and that wasn't the, what the game plan was from France so he, he went out of his and he, he 
you know, he's going to miss the next couple of games now because of it. Yeah, okay. All right, really interesting stuff. Derek, thanks a million. Cheers. Cheers, lads. It's uh, Derek McNamara from reactrugby.com if you want to check out more of that as well.